Good morning, everyone. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning, folks at home. You lucky dogs, no shoveling yet? Yeah, all right. I am Julie Good, and I am with the Staff Parish Relation Committee here at St. Joe United Methodist, and I am pleased to work with, um, on that committee, Jason Atkinson, Dr. Jim Bloom, the coffee man, so, you know, we gotta thank Dr. Bloom, um, Dan Kelly, Nadia Deutschenoff, Janet Treadway and Donna Jones, and the uh, six of us bring this announcement to you today. Through much conversation and prayer, Pastor Gabrielle has decided to step away from her current appointment. Her last Sunday at St. Joseph will be January 29th, and she will be on paid sabbatical during the month of February for purposes of renewal and discernment of her next steps and will no longer be appointed to St. Joe as of March 1st, 2023. Pastor Gabrielle believes this is the next best step to recover from the last few years of intense ministry and family illness. And she intends to focus on God's call on her life with the unchurched in Fort Wayne. Both campuses, Reed Road and St. Joe at the Y, we honor the tremendous and meaningful work that she has done for St. Joe at the Y. And we will miss her greatly. We hope and pray the very best for her as God continues to lead. Pastor Glenn and I and SPRC have already been in uh, conversations with the conference superintendent about the best person to follow. And we all our entire church, both campuses, covet your prayers, please. Thank you. Thanks, Julie, and thanks, Julie, and we're going to welcome our our praise team up this morning during our prayer time. Uh, did I hear Matt? You're leading prayer time yes. today. Yeah, we want to make sure we re remember and lift up Pastor Gabrielle and Park in our prayers today. I want to welcome everybody here on a snowy morning. I'm Glenn. I'm one of the pastors here at St. Joe, where we are for the fort. And what that means is that we're really for the people here in Allen County that Jesus Christ came for, that he brought God near to. That's what that means. It's just that simple. We want to live in the same way. I want to make you aware of a few things this morning as we gather here. Uh, I want to, first of all, thank folks for their faithfulness. If you've been connected with St. Joe and you've been giving in a faithful way, a sacrificial way, uh, that means so much here because that means that St. Joe continues to move into this next era, and we're thankful for that. It kind of astounds me that in the year 2023, there are people who God has touched their hearts so much that they continue to give faithfully to God's mission in the world. But if you're doing that electronically, we want to make sure that you're aware that we are shifting from payment system to another. We're going to be closing down and ending our contract with PushPay. It's a little more expensive, and we're going to a, a format called Stripe. And uh, if you're giving online, that affects you. If you say, I don't give online, I give in the offering box that's back here in the back, well, that's fine. Uh, nothing changes for you, but if you're giving online, you can either go to the website and all the instructions are there on the Give tab, or you can call the church office any day of the week but Friday, and Jenny will be glad to walk you through what you need to do to shift your giving over. Starting this week, uh, the, the current online giving format will no longer work. And so uh, it won't, your, your money, I don't think, will go through to us starting this week. It will, it will just, uh, that, will, that will not happen. But we're thankful for that giving. We're thankful for the way that folks express their gratitude to God by giving in that way. If you're a guest here today, I just want to encourage you to fill out one of the communicator cards. And Erica, one thing that had been mentioned is we, we are lacking pens a little bit out on tables here. She's going to take care of that. So we're thankful for that. 
Uh, there's these communicator cards on your table, and if you're a guest here today, we hope you'll fill that out, that one of those communicator cards, so we can know who you are and follow up with you. Okay, one last thing about For the Fort, and how are we For Fort Wayne? A couple weeks ago, uh, my first sermon, I mentioned the Allen County leading the state of Indiana in deaths of uh, children to, due to abuse and neglect. And after that week, uh, Linda Menchie, who attends at the 11 o'clock, called me and she said, Pastor Glenn, there's an opportunity for us at St. Joe to help push that back a little bit and stand against this situation of child abuse and neglect. So there's an opportunity coming up. This was in the email that went out this week to be a part of SCAN, the Stop Child Abuse Network's vision of striving to eliminate child abuse and neglect by volunteering with their fundraiser. Short and sweet is we're gonna have a group of people that show up March 7th or March 8th to help pack lunches that uh, will be sold to help benefit the Stop Child Abuse Network here in Allen County. And so you can show up either March 7th, 1 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. or March 8th, 9.15 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And you think you're out there today. I bet there's somebody out there thinking, boy, I wanna do that. I wanna help with that. I wanna be for the fort. I mean, that's where we wanna get, right, Sharon? We wanna get so we feel enthusiastic about those sort of things. What do you do? Well, if you have a church directory and you can look up Linda Menchie's cell number, you can call or text her or call the church office and they'll make sure they get you added to the list. Uh, those would be the two best ways this morning, and we'll have more about that next week and the week after. So that's my welcome this morning. Let's pray this morning. Oh God, this morning we look out and we see the snow falling, falling with gentle comfort across Fort Wayne. And we are reminded of the words of the psalmist that though our sins were as scarlet, you will wash us and we will be whiter than snow. Now that, that just strikes us to the very heart for we know who we are. We know our condition. Oh, but God, as we look out upon the snow, we are dumbfounded because it is so white, so pure and so brilliant on a morning as this. And it strikes us to know that because of how you have loved us in Jesus Christ, that when you look at us, you see us blameless, white and pure as the fallen snow. Oh, we give you thanks today for that. Won't you send your spirit, God, to bless us in this place today? In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand and greet one another. Let's know who we're worshiping with this morning. something together now. So. Yeah, well, you did the love of the And this is... Oh, this is my son, Logan, and his wife. Oh! Hi, Steve, how we doing? All right, as we come back together this morning, let's uh, continue to sing, let's continue to worship as, as we sing songs together.
Continue to worship together.
thousand times I failed, still your mercy remains. Should I stumble again, still I'm caught in your face. Everlasting, your light will shine when all else fades. Never ending, your glory goes beyond all faith. You will above all else, my purpose remains. Beyond all losing myself in bringing you praise. All right, we've reached that point in the service now where we share our joys, we share our concerns. We celebrate those times in our life when God has lifted us up. And we look to those times when we need lifted up by God. And so as we come to this time, I'm going to start by uh, again saying that we need to keep Pastor Gabrielle in our prayers, uh, part of it as well, her husband, uh, as they go through this time of discernment and try to figure out what God's next step for, for them is in their ministry. And we need to keep staff parish relations and uh, the district superintendent, we need to keep them in our prayers as well as they pray and consider uh, what God's next step for us is as well. So we need to keep those thoughts in our hearts and prayers. What else? Chuck. I'm thankful for the beauty of snow. Driving here, you see the, the branches, the trees, the evergreens, and it's just like what was that painter made? Bob, Bob, Ross. Bob Ross. Bob Ross painted all the way here. That was great. Uh, I confess, I woke up this morning and I looked out and I saw the snow and I thought it was so beautiful and everything looked so clean and so pure. 
and then I drove. And a <laughs> little less fun then, but you know, that's, that's part of the experience. So uh, we thank God for the snow, for the beauty that it creates, and for the fact that you brought us all here safely. Yes, Deb. Um, our daughter, uh, Kathy, her job is being eliminated. They're downsizing their company at the end of the month. So if you could pray for her job search, please. I will do that. Uh, often, yeah, I, you hear the old saying about when God closes the door, he opens a window. And, and I went through the similar experience back in 2008. I got laid off at, at my job at North American Van Lines. And uh, I work at Carroll High School now, and I have been so much happier since that change happened. So I pray that she will have the same kind of experience and she'll find a, a place where she fits and really fits well. So we'll pray for her, certainly. Others? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Yes. Yes. Grandkids. Grandkids. You're going to be with them today. <laughs> so pray for you. Pray for me. Pray, pray for Greg because the grandkids are there today. Yes. Uh, definitely, yes. So uh, whether they're in grade school, middle school, high school or college, grad school, kids are just really pounded, pounded in school. And so it's not work. and others words to them if we can just keep them really tight in our prayers absolutely uh, yes children uh, go you know they go through so much growing up you all grew up you know you went through it too um, school is not an easy place uh, not just the academics but the social aspects as well and so um, we definitely need to keep our kids in our prayers anything else Sure. So Nathan is one day away from finishing his MBA, awesome. and he needs prayers to find a job. So, <laughs> okay, prayers for Nathan is uh, so. So job searches in general sounds like a, a good yes. prayer concern yes. today. Any others? Snow removal. Snow removal. Yes. <laughs> yes. There you go. Man, can I can I just say though that okay, I know Fort Wayne folks are a hardy crowd, and I know they're used to snow. But to see such a nice group of folks out this morning confirms in my heart the, the sense that I think a lot of us have had that there are good days ahead for St. Joe. And so I'm, I'm just in a place of great gratitude and thanksgiving this morning seeing all the faithful folks who came out on a beautiful, but yes, a little bit treacherous <laughs> Sunday morning to worship. I agree, Glenn, absolutely. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that we can gather on a beautiful, snowy morning, that we can look out, we can see the beauty of your creation, the, the purity, the cleanliness, how it just looks so clean and beautiful. And so, Father, we're thankful for that. And we're thankful for everyone who uh, chose to come out in spite of that weather and to join us here this morning in worship. We're thankful as well for those who chose to join us from home. Uh, we are happy that you are with us this morning. Fathers, we gather this morning. It's a time of another transition in our church, and so we pray that you watch over everyone involved with that. Be with Pastor Gabrielle and Park as they uh, discern what the future looks like for them and how God will use them to further his kingdom. Be with staff parish relations as, and with Russ as they uh, watch over St. Joe as they pray about how you will lead us in the future. And just we pray that the right person will be found to continue to lead us forward to doing your work, to being for the fort. Father, for people who have job concerns this morning, those being laid off, or people who are graduating and, and looking for a new opportunity, Father, we just pray that you will guide them, uh, help them to discern where you can use them best. Not just their skills in business, but their ability as people to reach other people. Uh, Father, for those going through difficult health issues, we pray that you be with them. For our children who deal with difficulties in school, not just academic difficulties, but social issues, other problems as well, Father, watch over our children. Keep them safe. Keep them in your path. Help them to continue.
continue to be your children. Uh, be with our grandkids as well, and be with us as we are with our grandkids. Um, for while we love our grandkids, they can also be a challenge. And so just watch over us and help us to be the person they need us to be. And Father, finally, in all things, we ask that you use us to glorify you, that people will see our actions, and through them they will see your love, they will see your compassion, they will see your strength. They will see how you work for everyone's good. Father, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Scripture reading from Matthew chapter 4, beginning at verse 12. Now when Jesus heard that John was arrested, he went to Galilee. He left Nazareth and settled in Capernaum, which lies along the sea in the area of Zebulun and Naphtali. And this is what Isaiah the prophet said, land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, alongside the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who lived in the darkness have seen a great light, and a light has come to those who lived in the region in the shadow of death. From that time, Jesus began to announce, change your heart and lives. Here comes the kingdom of heaven. As Jesus walked alongside the Galilee Sea, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, throwing fishing nets into the sea because they were fishermen. Come and follow me, he said, and I'll show you how to fish for people. Right away, they left their nets and followed him, and continuing on, he saw another set of brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, and they were in a boat with Zebedee, their father, repairing their nets. Jesus called to them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus traveled throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues. He announced the good news of the kingdom, and he healed every disease and sickness among the people. News of him spread throughout Syria, and people brought to him all those who had various kinds of diseases, those in pain, those possessed by demons, those with epilepsy, and those who were paralyzed, and he healed them. And large crowds followed him from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and from the areas across the Jordan River. That's God's word. Let's pray. Oh God, we turn our hearts to you this day, and we just ask, we ask that you would meet us, remove every barrier in our hearts. Remove our stubbornness, remove our pride, and help us to see you face to face, to hear your call. In Jesus' name, amen. What is the distance between when you've been caught and you start to catch? What is the distance between when you've been caught and when you start to catch? I put that question to you and Martha kind of raised an eyebrow and so I understand it's a question that needs a little bit of explanation this morning. We have been caught, many of us, by the beauty, the truth, the grace of Jesus Christ. Is there an amen for that? Amen. Many of us have been. Perhaps not all, but many of us have been at some point in our life caught. Now, I realize that word caught might have a connotation for you, like hand in the cookie jar style of caught. <laughs> Whoops, I shouldn't have done that. And that description probably resonates with a few of you. There's probably been some point in life where you all of a sudden looked up in a situation and thought, what? have I done? How did I get here? What has happened? And in that moment, you also found that he met you there. And you were caught by the truth, the beauty, the grace, the mercy of Jesus. Others of you have been caught in other moments, caught by surprise, by the beauty of nature, and he met you there. Others still have been caught 
knowing there must be something more to life. There must be some deeper meaning. There must be some reason for me to do what I do. There must be something that draws me to love and serve my neighbor like I feel drawn to love and serve. And as you went to figure that out, he met you there and you were caught. But what is the distance between caught and catch? Scott McKnight, a theologian and a scholar of the Bible, suggests that people are most open to transformation in their lives when they are in a moment of crisis or on a quest. It's in those moments Jesus meets us, he catches us in his grace, in his truth, in his mercy, but then how long does it take before we turn and start to catch up? That's really what the text today is addressing and what it's talking about. It's talking about the distance between when we are caught and when we begin to catch. And in the text of Matthew's gospel, we begin with, Now Jesus heard that John was arrested, and when he heard that, he went to Galilee. Anybody who was here last week and paying attention? Anyone? Okay, didn't think so. No. Uh, Last week, we had John's gospel and John calling the disciple, Jesus calling the disciples in the context of John the Baptist saying, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Some of you remember that? Uh, Matthew's gospel tells us a different version of events slightly. Remember, John's gospel was written much later. It's focused more on the philosophy and the theology of what's happening in the ministry of Jesus. Matthew's gospel is a little more focused on the, just the facts, ma'am, kind of situation. He's a little more focused on the chronology. And what's fascinating is that while John's gospel tells us that Jesus calls disciples in the presence of John the Baptist, Matthew's gospel tells us that Jesus is calling disciples after John is arrested. So John baptizes Jesus. They're hanging out together. All their people are hanging out together. John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin, is arrested. In other words, we have on our hands a crisis. Now, how about that? The, the epistle of Hebrews says Jesus knows our weakness. He's been tempted in every way as us. But right here, we don't really think about that, do we? His cousin's been arrested. The one who told him who he was, who was telling the world who he was. And now Jesus himself is in the midst of crisis. Remember what Scott McKnight said? People are open to transformation when they're in a crisis or on a quest. The text tells us that when John's arrested, Jesus goes to Galilee. He lefts, leaves Nazareth, and he settles along the seashore at the Sea of Galilee. And from that time, verse 17 tells us, Jesus began to announce, change your hearts and lives. In the midst of crisis, we got a moment for transformation. This sounds like we're pointing in the same direction. Jesus is caught in crisis himself, but he is beginning to catch. By verse 18, as Jesus walks alongside the Galilee Sea, he saw two brothers. We've heard this story before, haven't we? Simon, who's called Peter, and Andrew throwing fishing nets into the sea because they were fishermen. Come and follow me, he said, and I'll show you how to fish for people. That's the way my translation reads. Any of you who grew up with King James translation or some of those? Yeah, I will make you fishers of men. But the word in Greek is anthropos, which means people. <laughs> I will call, I'll help you to fish for people, Jesus says to them. And what we find, and I would suggest to you, is that we have Peter, and we have Andrew, and we have the sons of Zebedee immediately after them, who Jesus comes along, and they must be on some sort of quest, don't you think? For here comes Jesus, and he says, let's go. And they drop the nets and follow. They must have been looking for something. Uh, can't you imagine them? Carol, can you picture it? Them fishing day after day, just like their ancestors had done, just like daddy and granddaddy and great-granddad and great-great-great-granddad had done along that shore for a thousand years. Can't you imagine them and, and them rinsing the nets out at the end of the day and, and Peter just looking off at the horizon and saying, Andy? What, you think they're different than us? You think they're better than us? They're not. They're just like us. See, and Andy, don't you think there's more than what we've been doing, fishing day by day? Don't you think there's a little more? I mean, it's good. Life is good. We got enough to eat. We're kind of out of the way of the Romans over here and of Herod. This is good. But 
Don't you ever wonder what it'd be like to really be in the middle of things? Don't you ever wonder what it'd be like to be a part of a story that would make our lives mean something? Can't you imagine those conversations as the sun sets and they're sitting in the boat getting ready to call it a day? I can. I think it's the only legitimate explanation for why they just drop it and go is that they were looking all along. They were scanning the horizon, waiting for something, for meaning to come their way. And so here we have Jesus in the midst of crisis giving a call and catching. And we find Simon and uh, Andrew and then James and John fishing and they themselves caught by the grace, the truth, the beauty when he calls their name and says, come with me calling them from their quest, calling them to go. And we then have the question answered for us. What is the distance between when we are caught and we begin to catch? The first hint of it is in the invitation Jesus gives, come and follow me and I will make you fishers of people. I'll help you fish for people. I'll show you how. Now right there, there's a hint, isn't there, Sharon? Follow me. There's a comma and, and actually Jesus probably didn't use a comma, right? There's an and, I will make you fishers of people. It's instant. The distance from being caught to catching is exactly, Deb, you're, you're the math whiz in the room. Zero. Zero, there it is. It's zero, there's no distance. And then we see that as the text continues to unfold. We see that Jesus calls them and instantly, at the exact distance of zero, Jesus travels throughout Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, and he announces the good news of the kingdom. And, and look at the people who respond as he and the disciples proclaim this. They heal every disease and sickness among the people, and news about him spread throughout Syria. And people brought to him all those who had various kinds of diseases, those in pain, those possessed by demons, those with epilepsy, and those who were paralyzed, and he healed them. I don't know about you, but that to me sounds like people who are either looking for something, because when they proclaim the good news of the kingdom, people say, wow, that sounds pretty, I wanna, that's what I've been looking for. Or it sounds like a whole lot of people in a crisis, don't you think? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Okay. I'm, let's just all huddle for a second, okay? Come into the huddle. Folks online, come on in now. There are a lot of churches in the world. There are a lot of churches in Fort Wayne. And a lot of them are growing and try to grow based on a model of attracting straight, young, white families with two kids and a guinea pig. Right? Oh, if we could just have some more young families. Now, we love young families. Uh, I still, if I suck in my gut a little bit, can resemble that remark. <laughs> when Jesus goes to catching, who's he catching? All. He's catching everybody. He's catching people who are on a quest, who are looking for something. And he's catching people who are in crisis. And friends... If, if we want to be a church that's scanning the horizon for what God's doing next, that's what we're going to have to be too. We're going to have to be people who are given invitation, even as we are caught, to everybody, inviting all people, but especially those who are on a quest, those who are in a crisis. Because the distance, the distance between when we're caught and when we catch is exactly uh, there was a young woman, and she uh, was really in a crisis. Her marriage was falling apart. It wasn't what she thought would happen. It was in an era in which uh, that was beginning to be more normal, but it wasn't the expected. She thought she would get married, and it would be a forever thing. But now her marriage was unraveling, and even though, uh, even though rockets were being fired at the moon in hopes of landing human beings on the moon, and even though the bouffant hair was rising higher and higher day by day, she was low. She was low. She was low enough that a makeup sales lady who was a neighbor, who she didn't know all that well, came to see her one day, and she just poured herself out. 
This is all the more remarkable if you knew the young woman because she has never in her life been a font of revelation, but she started to share what was going on in her life with this person she didn't know all that well, this neighbor who had stopped another young woman to sell makeup. <laughs> and as she shared about her life, as she shared about her marriage, as she shared about the businesses that were unraveling, and as she shared about her six-year-old daughter, what will we do? The makeup sales lady said, uh, I think we need to go to church. And she said, you know that, that, little, that little white church out in the country around the corner from here? Yeah, I know that. Okay, uh, meet me there Sunday. I'll be there with you. I'll go with you. So on Sunday morning, the young mother, she pulled up with her six-year-old daughter at this little white Baptist church whose footprint is smaller than probably half of this room. And there at the front steps stood the makeup lady saleswoman. There she was, ready to walk in with them, and she walked in and sat with them. And in that little Baptist church, in the midst of a crisis, the service unfolded, people sang the old hymns, and people did the old things, and the preacher preached the sermon, and then gave a call to the altar. And this young woman in the midst of crisis, well, something happened in that crisis. She heard the one who had walked along the sea and who had called to Peter and Andrew call her name. And when he said, Jean, to my grandma, she went forward to the altar and she met him there. And when my grandma looked to her right, up from her moment of prayer and perhaps through her tears, she saw that my mom, had come up with her as well because my mom had heard him say, Lisa. And she had come as well. She had been caught by the one who is full of grace and truth. And then my grandmother looked to Dar, the makeup sales lady, who she didn't know all that well. And she didn't know well enough to know that Dar had not really been to this church before that Dar had not had a relationship with Christ in any meaningful way, but that in her living room, Dar had thought, these folks need Jesus. <laughs> and so she had gone with them for the first time that Sunday, and she had heard him call to her. And she had answered the call, and Dar, in so doing, all of that reveals the distance between being caught and catching is exactly zero. Now, that doesn't mean life was perfect uh, for my mom, my grandma, or for Dar, or for me, for that matter. You can ask our therapists. <laughs> right? Oh, there ought to be an amen for that from my wife. She's here this morning. Yeah. Mom or grandma, you can put amen in the comments thread on that if you like. No. But it means we're caught. And it means we turn to catch, doesn't it? That's what it means. Uh, here's the deal. St. Joe is a church that's still in crisis. It's okay. We can say it. It's still happening. Great church, historic church, large church, but still in crisis. Good news. Jesus meets us there. Amen? Amen. Maybe you come here this morning and you think, uh, I'm in a little bit of a crisis. I'm in a really big crisis. Boy, do I have good news for you. I have a church for you. <laughs> and Jesus will meet you in that crisis. Uh, don't leave here today without committing to talk to somebody or even calling the office and setting up a time to talk with me if you're in that place. St. Joe is a church that is on a quest, I believe, for what God's calling us to be. We're scanning the horizon. What next, Lord, after pandemic and polarity, after the debates that have torn us apart, what next? I hear Steve somewhere saying that's right. I don't know where he, was that you, Lord? I hear him so, there he is, okay, <laughs> from behind me. Yes, now maybe you come on a quest. Great, you're in the right place. Man, have I got a church for you. And whether it's crisis or quest, God meets us here. Amen? This is the good news. This is the word. This is what we're told. Even in 2 Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians it tells us the love of Christ controls us. Because we have concluded this, one died for the sake of all, therefore all have died. He died for the sake of all so that those who are alive should live not for themselves, but for the one who died and was raised for them. 
So then from this point, we won't recognize people by human standards, even though we used to know Christ by human standards. That isn't how we know him. If anybody is in Christ, that person is a part of a new creation. The old things are gone, and look, the new has arrived. All these things are from God, who reconciled himself to us through Christ, and who gave us a ministry of reconciliation. You know what the rhythm there is, Chuck? It's we're caught, then we catch, and the distance is nada. Yeah, zero. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ by not counting people's sins against them. And he has trusted us with a ministry of reconciliation. How about that? We've been caught, and now we catch. And we do it in some very simple ways. I hope that you'll begin to pray. Lord, how do you want to use me in this season of both crisis and quest for St. Joe, but for my own life? How do you want to invite me into service? Is it through my time? Is it through my tithe? Is it through my talents? Is it through how I just share my own story with other people? Uh, but here is the word to you from the Lord today. God wants you. God wants to catch you up in this reconciling grace and mercy. And the one who is full of grace and truth has called your name. The distance between now being caught and catching, well, for us at St. Joe, it's going to be zero. Thanks be to God. stand together one more time, let's worship. I hadn't realized until just this moment what a big number zero was. <laughs> zero. The distance between being caught and catching is zero. I love it, it feels like a long way, doesn't it? It does sometimes, but it's not. Let's sing together.
I feel like I want to kick the stand over after that. Yes, thanks be to God. Thank, thanks for your faithfulness in showing up on a snowy morning. As we go forward, I want to get to know you, and I hope you get to know me. Some of you have already done that, and I'm thankful. There's sign-up sheets for cottage gatherings. They're out by the coffee there this morning, and I hope you'll stop and sign up at a, one of those gatherings at a home or in a church, in the church here, to get to know me. May you go in the peace and power of Jesus Christ to tell the world without fear that you have been caught by his truth, by his mercy and his goodness, and then to let yourselves be caught up in the ebb and flow of God's mercy in him to catch and to invite others to his goodness. Amen.